Hey guys, it's Jane from Laser Gaming. In this video, I want to talk about Battlefield 1 versus Call of Duty Infinite Warfare. I have channels for both of these games, and albeit my Battlefield 1's a lot more focused and I put a ton more effort into it, but I just wanted to talk about these two games because there's a ton of stuff being thrown around talking about how Battlefield's destroying Call of Duty and all this stuff, and I really just want to give you the facts at this point and really why. I personally prefer a certain game, and why I think one game will be more successful than the other. So we're just going to start right off with the pre-order numbers of both these games. Despite Call of Duty getting a ton of dislikes on their trailer, their trailer getting less views than Battlefield's trailer, it has almost twice as many pre-orders as Battlefield 1. So Call of Duty Infinite Warfare, both of these don't count PC because they weren't even listed on the top 40, so they're both under like 10,000 pre-orders. So Infinite Warfare had 109,000 pre-orders and Battlefield 1 had 61,281 pre-orders. So I'm just going to assume that those numbers are probably a bit higher. Infinite Warfare is probably at like 112,000 and Battlefield 1 is probably closer to 70,000 with PC. But that being said, Infinite Warfare is still way higher than Battlefield 1. So why does this happen when a game received such terrible feedback, yet it's still beating the game that people are saying is going to kill it? So really the main reason this is, is that so many more people play Call of Duty than Battlefield. I know people have constantly been saying that Call of Duty is on decline and that it's going down, but probably at least a million people a day play some sort of Call of Duty every single day, whereas Battlefield's roughly like 250,000. And what that ultimately does is on both games, when you log in right now, there's an advertisement for either Infinite Warfare or Battlefield 1. If you go into the store, if you look at stuff, there's an advertisement for both games. And it's just ultimately more people, that's the main form of traffic where people pre-order their games. It's right from their console through their console and through the previous game. So Infinite Warfare has that advantage just because Call of Duty has the larger audience. Now, that doesn't mean that Battlefield can't make a comeback before the launch of the, both of these games. So, Battlefield's set to have a open beta for Battlefield 1 near the end of August or early September. They said sometime during the summer, and since we just finished the closed alpha, which is the footage in the background because I was lucky enough to participate in the closed alpha, since that just ended yesterday, or at least the time of this recording, it just ended yesterday. I don't think they're going to have the beta right away since they haven't even announced it yet. So I'd bet end of August, early September, and Call of Duty is probably going to have their own beta in September as well. However, I bet that it's a closed beta, just like Black Ops 3. Now, I can see the strategies that both these companies are going for with these pre-orders. So the closed alpha generally for Call of Duty, like it did with Black Ops 3, required you to pre-order the game, which means that they're going to rake in more pre-orders because people are going to want to play the beta. The hardcore fans who wouldn't normally pre-order a Call of Duty game, they just wait until launch want to pre-order it so they could play the game. I personally pre-ordered Black Ops 2 because I wanted to play during the beta. Getting those 10 extra days to play it 3 months before the game comes out is just absolutely awesome. Now on the other hand, Battlefield's beta is going to be an open beta, which means tons and tons of people are going to be able to play this game. And if it's a good game, they're going to buy it. The problem is, is that Battlefield Hardline's beta was a bit underwhelming, and this just meant that not that many people bought the game right off launch. But Battlefield 1 seems like a great game from what I've played. And if they're able to capture an audience and persuade them to buy the game through their gameplay, they should be able to get a bunch more pre-orders and get close to Infinite Warfare. Now really the main thing that we run into is the longevity of these games. So Battlefield 1, because people are mainly buying the game for its core gameplay and the setting obviously, but mostly its gameplay, it's going to last longer because a lot of the pre-orders for Infinite Warfare are because of Modern Warfare Remastered. Modern Warfare Remastered looks absolutely awesome, but it's you require to pre-order Infinite Warfare to get Modern Warfare Remastered. So that automatically means that a ton of these Infinite Warfare pre-orders, a bunch of these people, probably 10 to 15% of them, aren't even going to touch the game. And let alone the a bunch of the other people are probably just going to play Infinite Warfare a little bit and then drop it. Battlefield 1 also seems to have a better system with DLC. While they both do a Seasons Pass sort of system and Seasons Pass or Premium, depending on which 
platform you come from that costs $50 and gives you all four DLC, Battlefield tends to give away more free stuff. So while Call of Duty claims that they give away free weapons through supply drops, they're not really free because a lot of people end up spending money and you can't really get them right away. Whereas in Battlefield, you get free weapons, free maps, and while this didn't happen at the start of the game, Battlefield Hardline was really a prime example. Where I think they added like 40 free DLC weapons for everybody to use, and they added a couple free maps in both of those games. A bit less than I would have liked, but at least they're stepping in the right direction. Now I'm not really going to talk about core gameplay between Call of Duty and Battlefield. I just want to talk about the core numbers here and what's going on between these two franchises at this time because ultimately the core gameplay you both know what it's like. Infinite Warfare is going to be futuristic with jetpacks and boost jumping like Black Ops 3 but maybe a bit more severe maybe a bit less we don't know because we haven't got a multiplayer reveal yet and Battlefield is going to be really generic World War 1 gameplay your classic boots on the ground shooter and really that's what those two games are offering. There's not much else I can say. It's really hard to explain how a game works and feels until you've actually played it. And if you guys want to see more Battlefield 1 gameplay, go check out some of my other closed alpha videos and subscribe if you are new here. I have some Call of Duty gameplay on my Call of Duty channel as well. That's linked down below in the description. But don't forget to drop a like on the video. Tell me what you think of Call of Duty between Infinite Warfare and Battlefield 1. But, I mean, obviously, don't just say the Infinite Warfare hate. Please gather your thoughts and give some logical feedback on why you think Infinite Warfare is winning if you think it's different than me. But again, drop a like, subscribe. That's what it for you guys. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. Let's go!